What you're looking at is the largest cluster of stone ruins found anywhere in the world until today. Until we find something else, these stone circles of southern Africa are the largest cluster of ancient ruins anywhere on earth today. As I said, there are more than 10 million of these stone circles. What's even more interesting is that these, they're connected by these weird channels. They look like these wires that connect them together. And also notice that weird kind of spider's web effect that goes away from the circle. No stone circle stands alone, even though it might look on, on photographs that the stone circle is on its own. If you look carefully, you'll see the, the hidden spider's web effect or the channels that connected them to the other stone circles. You'll see those hidden behind, beneath the soil around the circle. <coughs> there you can see the channel at the top connecting the stone circles. You can see the extreme age and the erosion of these structures. Um, obviously, much destruction has been done by, by um, um, town planning, town development, farming, roadworks, and that's really mostly where the destruction happens. There are huge parts of, of South Africa where you, if you fly over in a helicopter or with a drone these days at, at sunrise or sunset, there are vast areas that you can actually see many of these structures hidden under the soil. But when the sun is at a very low angle, you, it shows it up beautifully. You realize that there are vast areas that are just simply covered by these stone structures, but we can't see them. They don't even stick out of the soil anymore. And these channels, you can see channels that run, cover entire mountains with these stone structures all connected to each other. And there's another great example of a channel running over there into some weird hexagonal ruins and structures cluster of hexagonal cells. This is all very, not far from my house, actually. Um, when we sit on the balcony at Stone Circle or at the Ubuntu office, that's what you look at. The mountains around us are covered in all these structures. That's why we are located there. And the, the other mystery is the, the vast number of, of agricultural terraces 450,000 square kilometers and more of agricultural terraces. Keep in mind that the, all, the, all the history books tell us that Southern Africa was a sparsely populated part of the world. Apparently nobody lived there many, you know, until about you know, a thousand years ago when the Bantu tribes eventually made it down to where they live today. Up to that time nobody lived there. There were some, you know, some bushmen, hunter-gatherers that used to roam around, but that was it. Well, the 450,000 square kilometers of agricultural terraces clearly tell us a different story. So, who built those terraces? When they were built? When were they built? And what were they used for? Were they growing food? Were they doing something else? And how many people were they feeding? And what happened to all, the, all those people that they were feeding? These terraces cover entire mountains. Uh, when you start seeing them, you suddenly see them everywhere. And um, the Google, Google Earth images give you a very interesting um, idea of how widely spread they are as well. Again, South Africa, Zimbabwe, there are parts of Zimbabwe that it's almost impossible not to see these, these terraces. It's uh, unbelievable. Again, this is not far from my house. This is the entire side of the mountain is just covered in these and it goes on until you eventually hit either forestry or some farms that have developed farming or so forth and then it obviously disappears. And the other key thing is that there are no doors and entrances to these stone structures. And that obviously immediately excludes dwellings for people or dwellings for animals. So whenever you read in, in the you know, very, very naive history books that tell us that these are dwellings for migrating tribes or for their animals, uh, this is clearly a very ill-researched re author that put that down. This has got nothing to do for dwellings for animals or people. Archaeological drawings all the way from 1939 show us some of these clusters, stone, these stone circles with no doors and entrances, and you can see how they clustered together. In many areas you can see some of these clusters, and often they're actually carved on rocks. Sometimes you see these carved on stones when you walk among the stone ruins. Uh, that's even the, the, that's truly boggled my mind. It's like, what came first? You know, that they first carved the stuff out, and then they lay it out, or they first lay it out, and somebody came and carved it on a rock as a, 
as a, a sort of latecomer architect or, or town planner or somebody trying to document what they discovered there on a rock. Uh, it's just spectacular. And sometimes these, uh, these toad circles are concentric circles with no doors and entrances. And then you start realizing that this is, there's a lot more to this that meets the eye. And there's, obviously they were used for some very specific purpose.